Hi, I'm about to head outside for my homework today in Liz Steele's class. Now, Liz Steele is an urban sketcher, but she doesn't just draw buildings. She also draws at least one teacup a day. While she sips the tea, she will draw her teacup. And usually, most of the time, those teacups are have a floral design and it's they are beautiful and that's actually what she teaches us about um, finding patterns recognizing patterns in the things that you draw and use them to your benefit in your drawing well i don't have any floral type of teacups i only have boring glasses and just plain colored coffee cups <laughs> so uh, and actually I do like heading outside to draw on location I live in Amsterdam so I am surrounded by buildings and uh, well Liz tells us that uh, you can find a lot of repeating patterns in buildings as well in architecture so um, I'm going to explore that a little bit make a drawing and uh, follow uh, Liz her lead uh, following her techniques and uh, see what comes out of that. The weather isn't great. Um, I might feel sort of rushed because rain is sort of in the air. It's not raining yet. Um, and feeling rushed never really helps for your drawing. Uh, but I'll try to let go of that and just draw whatever I can and uh, we'll see what comes out of that. I found a nice corner at one of the canals in the center of Amsterdam. I'll start with the thumbnail sketch, like Liz does, to get an understanding of the building's proportions. I also look at some of the details, like that rooftop window. I'm not used to doing this and the thumbnails actually take up a lot of space on the page. So, I'll just do my actual drawing on the next page. Something else I'm not used to do is draw some guide pencil lines first. I'm following Liz's lead here and I have to say that even though it feels like I'm fiddling a lot, it does help to see how much space I'm gonna need to fit the building on the page. It happens to me more than often that I get to draw just a part of a building. The roof falling off of the page or the bottom not fitting on the page at all. Now that I have those fundament lines, I'll grab my pen and start drawing with ink. It's kind of wobbly and awkward because of the angle I'm holding the sketchbook for the camera, but also because I want my lines to be quick and loose, mimicking what I saw Liz doing in her demo videos. Not that I'm implying to be able to mimic Liz's style at all. No, not at all. Just trying the best I can, inspired by her videos. I counted all the windows as these are part of the patterns of buildings, but I'm not going to bother to count these small decorative blocks below the rim of the roof. They do form a pattern when you draw them. See that? Counting those panels and looking at their proportions does make sense to do. I'm using that top window as a reference to see where the ledge of the lower rooftop should go. Once I have that, I can build further. It's not necessary to draw each single roof tile, just a pattern of wavy pen strokes will indicate the tiles. I'm trying to avoid going into details. In Liz's demo, I saw that the color adds a lot of texture and shading, so I'll wait for that. Adding a bit of the foreground gives some context to my line drawing. Of course I cannot ignore the tree in front of the building. I do almost wish I had ignored the car, but it's there, so even a poor sketch and kind of abandoned sketch of it will do for this street scene. Alright, I think I drew all the essentials now. I also felt a few drops of rain, but nothing to be concerned about just yet. 
I really want to add color now. What I learned from looking at Liz's demo and what I really liked is that you can indicate texture with your brush strokes. So for those roof tiles, I make sure to keep whites so it looks like there are highlights on it. And for the bricks of the building, I dab my brush onto the paper so the paint isn't divided too equally. I'll use a bit of yellow ochre for the white paint on the building. Just a little artistic freedom I'm taking here. A bit of quick light color for the grey clouds in the sky and some green to indicate there are trees in the background. Let's also tackle that tree in the foreground now. I'm using green straight out of the pan. Then I add dabs of yellow to create a sense of texture and variety in color. I could study each window individually for the different colors behind it, but again, I don't want to slow down on details. So I use a watery blue that feels like reflections on the windows. I feel like I'm almost done now. I'll leave that horrible shape of a car without color, but we'll add some red for the Amsterdammertjes. Those are the typical red-brown steel traffic bollards that separate the sidewalks from the street in Amsterdam. I want the paint to dry a little, so in the meantime I add a few quick lines for the building next to the one I've painted. I really liked the purplish grey that Liz used in her demo drawing a teacup for shadows, so I'll mix a similar color to add a few shadows onto my building. Okay, while this dries, I can make use of my white space and add a little note so I don't forget where I drew this. <laughs> 